cost and will be receiving for their first point. As we gather today, we would like to acknowledge the land that we occupy in the ancestral and contemporary territory of the Shawnee, Potawatomi, Delaware, Miami, Peoria, Denecom, Wyandotte, Ojibwa, and Cherokee people. Specifically, we are on land treated in the, the 1795 Treaty of Greenville and the forced removal of tribes through the Indian Removal Act of 1830. We honor the resiliency of these tribal nations and recognize the historical context that has continued to affect indigenous peoples of this land. We would also like to acknowledge that while we have the privilege to be here together, we are a distraction from other ongoing events, including war, racism, anti-queer legislation, among others in the U.S. and internationally. Please join us in acknowledging these events through the moment of reflection. Now time for the rematch you have all been waiting for. Let's play some ultimate. We are coming to you live from Obetz, Ohio, just south of Columbus. And the Columbus Pride have just pulled to the Milwaukee Monarchs to start this game. The disc is centered and they're looking for a reset and they get it to Eileen Duffner. The pass to Rose Galinka on the far sideline, pushing it up the field. And a deep shot. That signaled in. in. I think that was Austin Pruka with that catch. That was a quick offense. No turns, maybe four or five passes. Yeah, that was awesome. I'm pretty sure Austin Pruka is going to be a big player for them tonight, if I remember right. In my years playing against her, she's very difficult to cover. So this is Deanna Ball, and I'm with Janine Walker, who previously has played for the Columbus Pride. What else do you remember about this Milwaukee team? <laughs> <laughs> um, they don't have many turns, which can work to their favor. And I see some returning players that were very talented. I think will really help them out. Um, I see the Duffners out there and Austin Pruka and JJ. Um, a lot of them play for Nemesis during the club season or Heist. And I think they'll really do well out here together. So this is the Monarchs with the pool going left to right. And that was Corinne Pruitt avoiding contact with the disc while it was still in the air centering. Oh, nice in cut by Cat. Ooh, Mary wide open. Back to Champ. There's not a lot of wind tonight, so I don't feel like getting pressured on a sideline should be too big of a deal. Got Sam Phillips with the disc. Resetting to Pruitt. Oh. They had that vert stack going, and Mast came from the front of the stack and just could not hang on to that disc. The Monarchs are starting an offense with their D-line out there, looking to get some action upfield. Getting it up to Johnston and back into JJ, who puts it up big. Oh, and Tots Moore got there for the defense. Janine, did I see you talking to Tots' parents down there when you walked in? I did. They're both here. Drove down from Michigan. Their uh, dad said that they've been watching all the games, all the live streams this season, so they're finally here to see one. That's awesome. Ooh, nice inside throw by Kat to Maggie. Raul. Ooh, a deep shot. Tots just far. can't run that down. 
It was a good look. It just had a little too much zest on it. Today in the stadium, it's 72 degrees, and there's not much wind out there. It's a very calm day. Ooh, a quick pass into the middle. It was very contested. Another contested pass, but Milwaukee mm. still has it. A nice put by JJ. Oh, just missed it. I think that was out of the reach of Montenegro. Sam Phillips with the disc. Another deep shot. It's a nice put to mass. Oh, and a layout grab. Amazing grab by Maggie. Maggie Raul with the layout in the end zone. I think what we've seen thus far is there are going to be a lot of bigger passes up, given that there's so little wind to no wind out there, that I think these teams are going to push it. That was a classic gra grab by Maggie. She's a very scrappy player. Played for Rival for a few seasons and is now on Pride. She's very quick, very scrappy, willing to lay out for the disc. See what kind of <coughs> turf burn she comes up with that. Also nope. has a great personality. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so this is the second game for the Milwaukee Monarchs today. They actually played over in Indianapolis against the um, Indianapolis Red. A game that they lost. I believe the score of that game was 10 to 27. So a double header for them today. This is a nice pull. Double zero Duffner, Duffy Duffner with the disc, passing it to the centering. Got Graham on her. It was a nice fake. Moved the mark side and was willing to get the disc all the way to the sideline. Oh, an unguarded person got the disc in the middle of the field but couldn't complete the next pass. Bailey Perkins is picking up the disc for the pride. Ooh, she goes for the center but misreads Graham. Pruka with the disc. The Cassie Brown. I think we're uh, on hold here, right? We're on serve with the disc. So yeah, as I was saying, uh, Milwaukee played an earlier game today and I talked to the coaches before the game started and the Milwaukee coach talked about the fact that they had um, to do this double header with a three hour drive in between understanding that that would, um, you know, be a rough way to go to get to this game and have to be in the car between games, but was realistic about it. So they did all the things that they could do, all the controllables that they could do at the end of that first game and getting themselves here to take care of themselves to be in the best position here. Phillips with the disc now in the middle of the field. Over to Raul. Back to Phillips. Pruitt with it now. We got Kat McGuire on the near side. There's Maggie coming in wide <laughs> open. There's Maggie again. Nice around the mass. Quick movement by Mass. Turner. Four by Tot. Call on the field. Looks like it was a pick call. Apparently, it must have been on Tot's defense since that's going back. I think we're working out positioning and stall count now. Ooh, the defender on the Monarchs did a really good job there. Good handler defense. 
Oh. Nice. That's on the break side. So that's a hold for the pride. Before it was by Cat McGuire. So far, it's a game of holds. So it looks like the Duffner sisters are both on the O-line out there, which is interesting. And they have Austin Pruka as well on the O-line. I haven't seen if they flex their players, if they go O and D, or if they are strictly O. I know Pride has a handful of players that flex and move back and forth between an O-line and a D-line. And then they have a few that are strictly O and strictly D. Yeah, this Pride D-line has Maddie Pletsky on it, and the coaches mentioned earlier that, that they'd like to see her on a turnover, take the disc, and get it moving. She can put some big ups for them. Over to Pruka now. I think that's Shriver with the disc. Casual grab by Duffy. Hmm. Gets it back Center. over to Stri Shriver. I see the long shadows. That sun is getting low. I wonder how much that sun is in the thrower's eyes right now. A nice inside shot by Pruka. Graham with almost the D. Oh. Nice floaty pass See by Brown. Did you catch who was the receiver on that one? Not sure. I... We are about a mile high up here in the booth. It's really hard to see numbers from the front side. It's a good hold by the Monarchs. There's only been one point that seemed to drag on a little bit with those deep shots that didn't connect. The points since then and right before that have been pretty quick holds. Mm -hmm. Both of these teams are looking for their first victories of the season. Monarchs coming in. 0-3 oh, and, and the Pride coming in 0-2 oh, on the season thus far. That is centered to Lowry. Phillips looking for the Great reset behind her. by the Monarch. Got Mary streaking. Going to hold the disc though and save that deep throw for another time. Cat with the disc now. She's going to send wow. it to Mary. What yeah, a great Mary. Play. Except I think she was, she out, was the out the back of, bounds, of the end yeah. zone. Very Mary of her to be able to get that far to the disc, though. She's very quick. I think the throw came from Kat. It, it did come from Kat. Yeah, I think Mary's arguably one of the fastest players on the Pride squad. Mm hmm Monarch's got a full 80 to go now to get, see if they can get the first break of the game. Oh, see if JJ, yep, JJ picks it up. Oh, oh nice great. D by Mast. D. Lowry with the disc. Over to a wide open Phillips. Turner streaking deep again. Comes back in for the under. This time McGuire streaks deep. But 
Turner holsters that throw. Over to Lowry. Looking for... Oh, nice strike cut. Monarchs are poaching that open side lane right now. Get, get it. Oh, oh, nice Lowry. Lowry. Yeah, just out of the reach of the defender, and Lowry got her hands on it for the score. Who was the thrower on that one? Do you recall? Mm. Okay. What are turnovers for this take on that? You see you lion one G. Look great out there. So a total of seven turnovers so far in six points in this game. We've definitely seen a lot of no turn holds by the offenses. Three holds in total or for both teams? In total. Feels like it's more than that. Mm -hmm. Oh, confusion on the ball. Was the pride defense not set? Is that what you saw? I'm not sure if there was a call before she threw it or if it's because she went over the line as she threw, but she An paused offense. right before she threw it, like Got something it. happened. Well, we're definitely going to see a repool here. Offsides, Offsides was the call. Okay. Pat McGuire is going to pull again. For Pride, we have about three minutes left on the clock in the first quarter. Go, oh, man. Big throw by Duffy. Cassie Brown. That was very monarchs of them to go strike past deep shot. I do remember that. Strike past deep shot, strike past. We knew it was coming, and we still couldn't defend it at times. I haven't seen a break yet. We've got 2.35 left in the quarter. The quarters in the PUL are 12-minute quarters. There's about two and a half minutes between quarters, so they'll take a break here as soon as we hit the end of the quarter. The way it works is at the end of quarters one, two, and three, whoever possesses the disc keeps possession until either they score or turn it, and then that's when the quarter will end after the time has run out. little confusion about who was going to pick that disc up. Threw it over to Phillips. Looks like they're... They are like two, in three, two, a 2-3-2. Two, three, two. See how fast the Pride offense can adjust to the change in the defense. Yeah, that'll be interesting with... Quick comment and break. So. Milwaukee deciding to make a change on defense to see if this can be the time they get a break. Wing, camp, hot. Good patience by the pride. Keep break cut. Okay, it looks like they're going person now. They got closer to the end zone. Oh, Transitioned out disc of it. is up. Oh. Uh, Mary makes a big bid for it, but that disc was just too long. You see that a lot when we transition, when you see a defense transition out of zone, that sometimes the offense will just push it a little too hard. So that shift in defense while they weren't in the zone when they got the turn, it definitely affected a little bit. I think there was a timeout. 
So uh, when the teams take timeouts in the PUL, coaches can make that call from the sideline as well. And my guess is at the moment that maybe the Monarchs will put more of an O-line out there now because they can switch mm -hmm. the players that are out there. Both teams can. Both teams can. So we'll see what happens here. There's one minute left in the first quarter here. You see the flag moving a little bit. If it's actually moving due to wind. Well, I was just about to make a judgment about what direction it was heading, and then the flag changed direction, so I'm going to retract my decision on which way. I think the wind <laughs> is blowing at the moment. I will say the shadow of the stands and the booth are starting to take over the most of the field, and the lights are mostly what's illuminating things now instead of the sun. Okay, Duffy's picking up the disc. One minute on the clock. It's great defense by Mary. Oh, champ with the D. That was awesome. Graham is picking up the disc. We're about 30 seconds left in the quarter. We've got the door open up here. I can hear teammates yelling out on the field how much time is left in the quarter. Oh. A great catch, keeping inbounds. that inbound. Oh, there she is, Pruka. The Monarchs handler defense looks great. It's very tight. Duffy with the disc. There's the horn for the end of the quarter. So it's up to the Monarchs now. See if they can get the break. If the Monarchs turn this disc, the quarter will be over. Oh, that was the quick action. Uh, I couldn't even keep. Oh, Pruka is open. A lot of crowding around the disc right now. Put up a wide throw to the outside. The so Milwaukee held that possession, and despite the fact that the clock ran out, that point is going to go on the board for the Monarchs for the first break of the game. That was a D by Pruka and an assist. This live broadcast of the Premier Ultimate League is brought to you by Spin Ultimate. Spin Ultimate providing custom team uniforms and ultimate apparel since 2007. Visit Spin on the web at spinultimate.com. What are they, spaceships from Mars? No, they're frisbees. Watch it soar. It flies way around like a bird. You can even run for a pass. You can play all kinds of games. Isn't it amazing? Frisbee Flying Saucer. 
Yours at toy, drug, and department stores. All right, we're coming back into action for the start of the second quarter. The Mon Milwaukee Monarchs are up 5-3 over the Columbus Pride after the first quarter. We are at the Fortress Obet in Obet, Ohio. We've got to check on the temperature. We were at 72 at the start of the game, still 72. The flag is still hanging on the pole with no wind showing. That's JJ with the pool. I feel like that's trailing out of bounds. Looks like Pride's doing a 3 2 split stack. Champ starting with the disc. There. One reset behind. Oh, that was a fun little play. Mm -hmm. Got it over to Cat McGuire. Up the line to Turner. Back to Pruitt. Raul was open briefly. Still open. Maggie just barely. Oh, she oh, may have been out of observer bounds. Observer called her out of bounds. She did jump with her foot. I thought maybe she had the disc in her hand already. But apparently she stepped out of bounds on that catch. Injury time out there. AJ's going to take a sub. Keep an eye on Jarek and make sure she's all right on the far side. Nice break. The cat. That, that Monarch Handler defense is so tight. It's a great way to disrupt a defense or an offense, though, is to play that Handler defense so tight like that. More with the disc in the middle of the field. <gasps> Ooh, sneaks that pass into Raul, who puts a big one. Wow. Up to mast. Risky, nice risky, risky, risky. I like the shot. Maggie with a really scrappy grab and then a deep shot. Perhaps when you go down a break right at the end of the first quarter, taking a couple of risks is worth it. Definitely. I was talking to the pride coaches before the start of the game. And they were, they've had two games in and felt that those first two games were all about learning. And now they're hoping that their chemistry is coming together and they're on the right path through these next four games that they have left in their season.
butt ski with the pool. It abounds. That one also trailed out that way. Starting to make me curious if there is a breeze down there, what direction that breeze is blowing. Like, Dean's going to center it. And they're running a horizontal stack. I want to turn. Unexpected turn. She had an open receiver, just couldn't make the connection. All right, Graham's Honey. picking up. Jenny Perry wide open on the open side. Dump by Jenny. Great swing. Back to the middle. Raul with a great grab. I think if Pride can just get more of those dumb and swings across the field, it really will open everything up for them. Here it goes. Jenny Perry is wide open all over the field. Oh, and a turn. Just could not hang on to that one. It's a great point, though, about keeping the, the disc moving and changing the angle of attack for an offense. Rufus disc. To Glinka. Great cut. Pruka with a save. Mm. Reds the needle. It's a nice inside shot by Pruka. Another Cassie Brown score. this game yet I thought she's been in that end zone a lot pride is coached by Elaine Wetley and Dustin McConnell notice that Dustin McConnell is going out a lot with the O line um, it looks like Elaine Wetley is calling all the lines side and then the monarchs are co coached by Caitlin and Nick Wong Caitlin Murphy and Nick Wong. I think Caitlin Murphy is a previous player. I know Elaine Wetley is. They probably also have an assistant in Elliot Alexander. I'm not sure I've seen him out there on any of the lines or not, but mm -hmm. maybe we'll see him go out there. Seems like he might be doing a lot of like sideline feedback to players. Oh, Ooh, wow. nice grab. No mark, though. Champ has all day to decide where she wants to throw it. <laughs> That's the best position to be in as a thrower. No mark. Yep. Nice swing pass over to Lowry. Um, the throw is too high. Uh, the next pass was just a little too high. It would have been a great change of angle of attack. Let's see if Lowry can get it back. She does. I think she was fighting for that one after her turn. I know as a player myself, if I turn it, I try to play twice as hard on defense because you feel like it's your fault, but that one really worked out for her favor. She went all out and got that D back. It's like there's a pick pick ball. on pick ball, yep. Just thrown a little behind the receiver there. Monarchs will have another shot at uh, trying to earn a break here. That's Jarek with the disc. Good to see her back in there after she went out on that injury timeout a few points ago. Ooh, Sammy trying to get in there for the D. Deep shot. Doesn't quite connect. Mary grabs it. There's a foul call. Way back on the Monarch's throw.
French with the disc. Gets it around to Jarek. Ooh, a hammer throw. Over to Welsh. Oh, and a wide, wide open. open. Receiver in the end zone. That defense got collapsed a little bit. Another break for the Monarchs. What do you think Pride needs to do to come back here, D? I think they just need to take care of the disc a little bit more. Um, I think when they have the disc on in their hands, they're just having some simple misses. Maybe they need a little more leg action to make those throws a little bit easier, a little more wide open receiver. And then defensively, the Monarchs just seem to be pushing really hard, and I feel like the Pride are maybe just a half step behind everybody. Mm -hmm. I agree. Oh, we can hear the fans starting to get fired up here. The chant of Let's Go Pride. There's actually a fan down there in a lion costume today. <laughs> See if this pole is inbounds. It is. It is holding inbounds. It's Phillips to Pruitt. Nice break shot. Running a nice Great little pull defense. play there. There's a foul, no contest. I think it was on the throw, though, so the disc is going to stay where it is. Oh, Maggie, way downfield. Lots of yardage there. Okay. Mary cutting across. Pass. Mark's playing crowding. really tight. Yeah. A little bit of crowding there for the Pride. Everybody was trying to get to their reset positions all in the same moment, same part of the field. Didn't leave a lot oh. of options. That's Jam. nice movement. Good wow. movement to Pruitt. Wow, Nice strike cut. Mass to Pruitt on that one. Champ really caught her defender on their heels. This season, the Columbus Pride is supported by our hometown sponsor, Strange Birds. Attract ideal leads, convert them into clients, and take your business to new heights. It all starts with brand messaging and copywriting that's as unique as you are. Strange Birds is owned by Anna Hetzel, who is part of our local Frisbee community and is a Columbus Pride fan. Visit strangebirds.land to learn more. Here goes the pull by Mal Griffith. Like Kruka picked it up and centers the disc. We have someone streaking deep. There's Let's that see quick if it movement. floats enough. You mentioned that. You there refer to it, it as a strike deep throw, but that time it was just a couple little give and goes that opened up that deep look. Mm hmm. I think the Monarchs are really great at not setting their cutters too deep initially. They stay further up the field, which opens up the deep field. Monarchs are up 8-5 in the second quarter. We've got just a little over four and a half minutes until halftime. Halftime will be a 10-minute stretch where the teams will get an opportunity to try and regroup, make some changes going into that second half. Eric with the pool. Pruitt with a disc for the pride over to Phillips. Oh. I saw that too. Like, yeah. Looks like they're doing some coachy defense here. Yep. Have someone sitting in the back space. It looks like JJ. They're definitely sitting on the unders.
I think that movement, if the pride can find a way to continue that side to side move it, movement to catch that defense in their running space, mm -hmm. they'll find some openings. A deep shot. You pull it down. It's a nice look from Kat McGuire. Rachel Mast in the end zone. So it looked a little dicey at the beginning there, but it, it seemed they seemed to recognize the defense was doing something a little different, and they managed to move that disc to the high side of the field and push it up for that score. See the Duffner sisters going out there again. So there's about three minutes and 44 seconds left on the clock. Six, eight. This would be a big break if the D-line D can get out there and play some tight D and get a break. That would put them at seven, eight right before the half. I think that would be a good one mentally for the Pride, too. See if they can get a good defensive stop here and then hold possession for a score. I think that would really spark some fire. I'm not quite seeing the fire they need to win this game yet. I think if they could get this D, it would really help their momentum. Duffner picks up the disc and centers it. That was some good defense to keep upfield cutters from being open. That handler action that seems to be hurting the pride perhaps the most. Oh, and a deep shot. See if Duffy Pletsky. can pull it down. Pletsky oh, got up Pletsky there for the gets pride in there. to do that. Pletsky and Johnston were down there sandwiching the Monarchs player. But Duffy's usually pretty good in the air, so I thought she was going to pull that down, one down, but missed it. Okay, Graham's picking up. There's 2.55 left on the clock. Sure, what was in question? Ah, oh, there's a timeout, timeout being taken on the field. That's what was in question. This might be an opportunity where the Pride then swaps out their D line for some O line players. As we talked about the importance of perhaps getting this break right before the half. I bet Plutsky's feeling good after that one. That was a pretty huge D for them. So this is going to be their opportunity here. 2.46 left on the clock, right before half. I do see Cunningham stayed out there, but I do see more O-line. What I have noticed as O-line players are out there on the field, so they definitely swapped some folks. Mm -hmm. Looks like they're in a traditional hoe stack. Crook yep. is taking the deep. Ooh, nice a switching switch. by Monarch. Crook is going to get that. Ooh. Oh, oh, errant throw by Lowry there. JJ picks up quickly. A lot of quick movement right off the turn. Ooh, nice mark. Oh, oh great Turner. effort by Mary. Oh, that's that's a tough one. Mm -hmm. Going from the almost get on the layout D to having the next throw be for a scoring pass. Mm -hmm. Still 2.15 on the clock, though. If they can get a clean hold here, the Pride might still have a chance at a, a D point break that they can get to. I think something else that the Monarchs do really well is picking up the disc after a turn and getting some quick movement right away, which catches all the players off guard. Um, really allows them to have a lot of open players because everyone on their team expects that quick pickup. Yeah, I think that that sort of action requires comfort with each other in terms of knowing what players will do whereas a lot of teams if they walk to the disc to pick it up after a turnover typically they're setting up a, a strategy offense so it's that trust factor i think to move the disc quickly after turns like you described so 
Phillips with the disc about at the brick mark, swinging it over to Raul. Looks like they're out in a 2 3 2 again. Forcing the over the top throws, and that one got past Welsh on the defense. Cat McGuire with the disc over to Phillips. Raul finding space for a nice forward pass over to Mast. Lee. And a great pass to Turner. Oh, there was that quick hold we described that only took 45 seconds off the clock or so. Let's see if the Pride can work at a, getting themselves a D break here. Going into half. 8-9 versus 7-10 would make a, a mighty difference for the Pride right now. Yeah, I think mentally that is, that's pretty big. If, if Pride can get this, they'll really still feel in it and come out of half with a lot of fire. No real long point. Oh, wow. Like that, that fire. Emily came out and just tried to lay out for the first center pass. Here we go. Here the pride's really picking it up with the defense. Monarchs are doing a good job of staying calm dumping and swinging across the field to help their players downfield get open. There was a pick called. I don't think it affected the play, so it's just going to be a reset of the pick player in the middle of the field. Duffy with the disc right now. Emily on the mark. Center it to Brown. Oh, nice. Cunningham almost got in there to disrupt that pass. Another layout. All right, he's really going Big all out for this one. Way to the far side of the field. Oh, wide open. Uh, Monarchs did a really nice job of staying calm with that tight defense and being aggressive on their catches. Felt like it almost fed their energy a little bit too. Yeah. Which it's not the way you want the energy to go when you go out there with that kind of fire on defense. Move about 10 seconds to half. 10 seconds to half. So, assuming we don't experience a drop pool or the like, this is the Pride's offense to own right now. If they can no turn it into the end zone, then they can get this game back two points at 8 10. I think Pride just really needs to work on their space. have a lot of matchups on field to get open, but sometimes there's just not the space. I think it's the space for sure. And perhaps a little of the timing. I feel like I've seen some players streaking deep and the thrower has already moved on to their reset, which is appropriate if you don't feel like you have something to get to your reset, but they're just missing that timing a little bit. Oh, oh, we've got a pride player wide open deep. <gasps> I think that was Pruitt. meant for Todd, but Pruitt picked it up. All right, Mast with it now. Oh. The big around throw to Raul. Very so there's nice. that clean hold to at least keep the game to two points as we go into half. That 
was masked to Raul for that last point. The players have 10 minutes here to relax, grab water, talk about strategy with, as they go into the second half. All right, we'll see you on the flip side of this halftime. What are they, spaceships from Mars? No, they're frisbees. Watch it soar. It flies way around like a bird. You can even run for a pass. You can play all kinds of games. Isn't it amazing? Frisbee Flying Saucer. Yours at Toy Drug and Department Stores.
Association. CUDA is a nonprofit organization that was created in 2000, the year 2000, to help develop the sport of ultimate in and around Columbus, Ohio. CUDA promotes the sport of ultimate in a social atmosphere in which players can learn and teach the sport. So CUDA places tremendous emphasis on playing by spirit of the game. It also fosters competitive environments to accommodate high-level play. You can learn more about CUDA and its links by heading to their website at columbusultimate.com. This live broadcast of the Premier Ultimate League is brought to you by Spin Ultimate. Spin Ultimate, providing custom team uniforms and ultimate apparel since 2007. Visit Spin on the web, web at spinultimate.com. The Discraft Ultra Star is the official disc of the Premier Ultimate League. Discraft, the world leader in disc sports. Getting ready to start the second half. And I'm not gonna lie, I've lost track. Oh, I see the disc now in Pride's hands, so they're gonna be pulling to the Monarchs, right to left. Looks like an O-line out there, though, which is interesting. I wonder if they did that strategically. Uh, 
nice pull by Cat. I was just going to ask if you saw who that was. Centers to Brown. Over to Pruka. Good defense by the Pride. Kind of crowded mm -hmm. that sideline where they wanted to go with the disc. Rufus with the disc. Pruka with stick grab. Over to Rufus. There's the sister combination at work. Ooh. Duffy to Brown. Oh, was that down? It yeah. was down. Yeah, that came off her hand funny. Mm -hmm. It was destined to be on the turf. This would be big for Pride if... I think the way that Milwaukee was sitting on that defense, they were just teasing the pride into that shot up in the middle, ready to D that. That was Cohen, number 19, with the D. Ooh, Pruka and a little the push pass to Pruka for the score. While that was a hold for Milwaukee, I'm sure the pride is disappointed that they had the D chance and could not really push it up the field at all. Yeah, the Monarchs defense looked great. Probably didn't have a lot of options. Jules, do we have a check on the temperature for the start of the second half? Oh, we've dropped two degrees. Starting to cool off a little bit. <laughs> The days are definitely longer here. The last home pride game. By this point, we were playing in the dark. Well, not in the dark. Of course, the lights were on, but the sun had completely set. Did you see who pulled that for the Monarch? JJ, I believe. Derek with that pull. Phillips unmarked. It's Lowry. They're having their 2-3-2 two, two out there again. I like the idea of the quick action. If they can keep that pattern going, that might be helpful. Ooh. Oh. Nice backup by Tots there. Back to Lowry. Yeah, this quick action wow. is starting to beat the defense. If the Pride can pull that together and keep it up. Great grab by Lowry. Oh. Pushes that pass out the back of the end zone. Lowry just got a little too excited, it looks like. And it looks like that disc is going to be brought in at basically at the point where Lowry threw it. So it was never in bounds. <laughs> Starting the Monarch offense. Hmm. Like Mary's trying to take the deep away. Uh, not in. Montenegro with the disc. Oh, there uh, we go. Good defense by Mary. I think she got yeah. the hand block on that. Pride was really tight on the defense there, and it kind of made the Monarchs look panicked. Okay, Lowry's picking up. Pushing it up that sideline, throwing that into a crowd. He threw that a little too outside in. He needed to go a little more straightforward. Raul was a little height overmatched there. Monarch with the disc on the far sideline. That's Jarek with the disc. Got the reset pass off, but did not continue with the swing. Good defense by Lowry. Oh, great oh, there defense we go. by the Pride there. Okay, let's see if Pride can work this up. 
This is an O point for the pride, though. Getting that D oh, back. Oh, Mary! Super important. Nope, you're in the end zone, in Mary. The, end zone. the white line is the end zone. I think she was a little confused by that yellow line out there, but that's a score for the pride. Cat McGuire with the assist. It's going to bring the score to Pride 9, Monarchs 11. What do you think the Pride needs to do here with their defense to see if they can get a break going here? I don't think they've had a break yet in this game. You know, right before half, I finally was seeing that fire. And I think they just, they really need to be more aggressive and take chances to get the think maybe they're especially because they're behind two points and they're playing a little conservative i think if they can really just take that chance and get that layout d and then play calm o they can get back in this game and i agree being aggressive even without getting the the d themselves if they can be disruptive and force them into a turnover that would go a long way to helping their cause right now it's a pull by mal griffith Kruka, the Brown, Duffner. Ooh, the Brown big pass, takes but a deep shot. Too far out in front. So the Pride get their opportunity here. They're going to have to take it a full 80 yards to get this break. Cunningham's going to start them off. Oh my goodness. Just Champs threw it threw right that. into the defense. Oh, oh hand block by Mel wow. Griffith. That was an amazing hand Perkins block. Perkins gets that disc moving. Pletsky. There we go. Wide open deep shot. Just the timing didn't connect. That was Hughes in the deep space. Hey, they need to just work it up nice and easy here. I think they needed to get that. Yep, the first dump needed to get out of there, and they did that. It's too much crowding. Some good but reset the action. The second reset is wide open. The first is being guarded really tightly, so they should just immediately push that initial reset through, hit the second one. They're doing a good job of. Oh, shoot. nice breakthrough opportunity, but pushed it wide. It's Brown with the disc. Oh, nice champ. And Pruitt takes that one away from Rufus. Old oh teammates on Ohio gosh, State. Oh, teams. Cunningham needing to get two hands on that disc. Brown with a nice swing path, pass. T Up to Rufus. Oh, oh, injury. Seemed to step a little funny. Not sure if that was an ankle tweak. Oh, looks like she might be cramping. Sending in Lensing to take her place. Like a calf cramp. Just a reminder, this is Milwaukee's second game of the day with a three-hour drive in between. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's rough. And that's kind of unusual. When I played Pride... We never had games in different locations. We would play two teams, but at the same stadium. Right, without the drive in between, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's a good defense there. Again, a good defensive moment. I think Pride is probably that timeout. We have just under five minutes to go in the quarter. And again, we keep speaking about the importance of the Pride getting their first break in this game. 
they can pull it off here, it would go a long way to helping them getting some momentum to finish out this game. Hmm. This season, Pride is supported by our official team sponsor, CUDA, the Columbus Ultimate Disc Association. CUDA is a nonprofit organization that was created in 2000 to help develop the sport of ultimate in and around Columbus, Ohio. CUDA promotes the sport of ultimate and a social atmosphere in which players can learn and teach the sport. Though CUDA places tremendous emphasis on playing by the spirit of the game, it also fosters a competitive environment to accommodate high-level play. You can sign up for leagues by heading to their website at columbusultimate.com. Registration for their summer leagues is currently open and closes April 17th at 11.59 p.m. Um, so it's already it's closed. It's closed. But in future seasons, you should really look them up. I have played Gouda many, many summers and springs, and it's been very memorable and a fun time. So, so the Pride were able to get the defense out of that timeout. Graham with a nice fake. I think Eileen's sagging a little bit on the defense, trying to take away the lane. Oh, what a great grab by Champ. A misread between Champ and Graham. Yeah, I saw Graham actually lose her footing there a little bit ago, too. I don't know if that maybe caused a little tweak for her and she wasn't quite ready to move when Pruitt tried to put that pass up to her. It was a great drop by Plut. Oh, good defense. That's a good read. I think that's Natalie Barnhart, maybe? Not totally sure. 20s. No, it was Hughes. Hughes with a D. It's Huey, yep. Duffy's going back for the disc. Right around the brick mark for the Monarchs. Ooh, good job, Huey. Taking good away defense. the around. Oh. Mitchell Mass was in the vicinity of that D, but could not get it. And then another clean, Man. clean defense or D, deep look for the Monarchs. And Rose Glinka was able to jump that one in for the score. You definitely know Pruka wants to take that deep shot, so when she gets the disc in the center like that, they always have an option going. Yeah, I feel like the defense is working super hard for the Pride right now. They did, you know, had a lot of good action during that point. How many turnovers were in that point, Jules? So there were eight wow. turnovers during that point, so... I feel like they were doing what we call putting sand in the Monarchs' pockets, right? Like the Monarchs' offense was struggling to keep their movement going. But that last turnover, the Monarchs maybe lost a little bit of that sand and got the movement back and were able to put that score in. See if the O-line can just get this hold again. We've got about 2.45 left in this quarter. Cunningham is still out there. She was out there in the last point as well. Defense here. I'm hearing a fire call, so I think they're going into their person defense now. See if Pride can make the appropriate Oof. adjustment for person. That second handler reset is, is a lot more open than that first one. Hope they start looking towards that. Graham pushes through. There's Raul again. She always is Ooh. almost always is available for those quick shots, and she is able to thread that one through to Phillips, I think. Yeah, it's not common to see Sam Phillips as a handler in the end zone space like that, but she got herself wide open in that narrow lane. 
Maggie well, took it. She took Maggie that shot. Maggie took it. So that's a good hold for the Pride. See if they can get those defensive legs back out there. I see Evans is on that line. He was very energetic at the end of that first half on that D point. Putsky and Johnson are out there. Cunningham is still out there. This might be Cunningham's third point in a row, I think. It has. Yeah, we'll see if uh, Evans comes out again and tries to get that initial D. See if these D legs can get some action going. That's Brown to Duffy, back to Brown. That quick action Ooh. that the Monarchs like. And there's Evans. Ooh, they're in a zone look. Ah. It's an over the top uh -huh. look that didn't quite make it. So that little zone look was the disruption that the Pride needed. Let's see if they can convert this into a point. It was a nice over the top look and throw. It was just. The receiver didn't quite get didn't it. Didn't anticipate it. Over to Pletsky. This would be big. Pride are in the pride. red zone. Oh my goodness. That's, is that Huey? Oh! With an opportunity to get the break and couldn't hang on to it. Hey, if they can just force this D with this new defensive look here, keep it down here, they could have another shot. I think that's Huey. Huey, Evans, and is it Jenny Perry in the cup? Yep. Doing a 3-3-1. Three, three, but he's in the deep space. I think we're going to see some action from And Prutka is wide open on the far sideline. But as a good zone defense works, it's hard to get it over there. Johnson's doing a good job of back in deep space. Oh, let's see. Ooh, a hammer into the end zone. Oh, oh, oh but then that is dropped. I think the defense coming drop. through. Yeah, the defense coming through caused enough of a distraction for that. All right, the Pride have another 80 yards to go. They're getting their opportunities. They just need to start converting these. There's Perry on a deep look. That was kind of uncharacteristic of uh, Pruka there. Oh, that's the end of the quarter. Not gonna lie, I lost track of that clock, so we're at the end of the quarter. Pride with possession. I think there was a call there. Yep. Oh, timeout. So before Cunningham threw that pass, there was a timeout called, probably by one of the coaches on the sideline. What do you think the Monarchs do here, Janine? I think they're going to go to their classic tight defense and try to rattle our Pride's handlers. The fans are starting to get on their feet here, cheering on the Pride. They know the importance of trying to get this score. Ooh, they're throwing t-shirts. That's why everyone's And on their they feet. know the importance of t-shirts. <laughs> like Luda's out there just chucking them. And we do see some subs on the Pride um, line. Lowry's with the disc. Potts Moore is out there. Mary Turner. So they definitely made some substitutions during that timeout. So yeah. there's no time on the clock. It's all about this possession for the Pride. Like that play. They had three cutters on the side shoot across to the opposite side of the field. Raul and then, with that undercut. Across which was desperately needed over Number to Mass, four, wide open. back over to Raul. Ooh, they need to calm down a little bit. And oh, a great taking the shot pass to Mass. Oh my goodness. Finally, they get the D break <laughs> they've been wishing for. <laughs> Three quarters of the it. game. Maggie just taking that shot. She's not scared. So we will take a two and a half minute break here while we're between the third and fourth quarters. The score is Pride 11, Monarchs 12.
This live broadcast of the Premier Ultimate League is brought to you by Spin Ultimate. Spin Ultimate, providing custom team uniforms and ultimate apparel since 2007. Visit Spin on the web at spinultimate.com. Right, we're coming into the fourth quarter. Pride is making this very exciting. They are down one point now, um, and they are receiving um, from the Monarchs, so they will be coming out on offense. Getting that D break at the end of that quarter was huge for them. They can hold this offensive point. I see Raul Moore, Turner. Pruitt, Phillip, Mast, Evans. Oh no, that's McGuire. The Monarchs are in a bit of a right. Mm -hmm. Again, the quick movement that might break through this. Or at least get them to a position where the monarch call themselves back in person. Ooh, oh, big beautiful swing. swing. Raul with the disc on the near side sideline centers it to McGuire. This is really beautiful flow. To Moore. Wow. That ties the game. And that this crowd is getting on their feet. Score by Becky Tots Moore. All right. Pride coming back on with that D-line. What do you think we'll see? I don't know, but it's going to be exciting. <laughs> the energy has definitely been uplifted in this game. So at the very least, I think we're going to see more of that. Yeah, I think on the field and off the field. I hear the fans a lot more all of a sudden. It's 12-12, 11 minutes left in this game. Going to be exciting. Don't know if it's noteworthy, but I see Jarek on the trainer's table. Looks like she's taking a shoe off, maybe getting some tape done. She's definitely somebody the Monarchs are going to want to see out there on the field, so hopefully it's nothing major. All right, Mal with the pull. Oop, right through Duffner's legs. Well, Brown with a throw and go. Seventeen's wide open. Rufus with this. To Brown. Brown a deep shot. Puka. Puka. That's is she a gonna pull up. it down? That's <laughs> Pletsky and Puka. <laughs> and Pletsky wow. outlegs it and gets the D. 
That's amazing. I'm That's not going to lie. When I saw that disc go up, I didn't think Pletsky could get there in time. And I didn't she, think so either. Boy, did she, though. Pletsky is a much newer player compared to Pruka. Pruka has a lot of experience. I thought she was going to just get the positioning and pull that down, but Pletsky went out there and went all out. Made it happen. Johnson with the nice disc. movement. I like the quick action. Is that Natalie Barnhart? That is Barnhart. Yeah, I like that Graham pushed through, opened up yep. that lane to Pletsky. We've been talking about that. That's Mel with the disc, Mel Griffith. Here Cunningham needs there to push go. through then, yep. hit that around. There it is. I think that that is wide open all day if they just keep doing that. It's really easy as a handler to feel like you have to get open as that initial reset, but... They need to push that first reset through. Evans with the disc. Getting a little <gasps> crowded on that sideline. Oh! But what nice a nice put. throw. And yeah, Graham. And Johnson keeps her feet in bounds. That was amazing. A very nice calm throw by Graham in a heated moment. And Johnson just wide open in the corner. This is perhaps the momentum shift that the Pride was hoping to get to. I know it's definitely energized the crowd. There's no t-shirts being thrown this time. That is just pure energy for the team right now. The lion is up. He's out of his seat shouting. This is getting exciting. I just feel like Pride has been down to the entire game until now. And that's tough, too. I mean, there's there's... Just under nine and a half minutes to go in this game, but it is tough when you get to the late stages of a game and the team that's been down for the most of it starts to rise up. That's that's hard to come back from. We'll see what the Monarchs can do here. Mm -hmm. I think the Monarchs are probably feeling a lot of fatigue right now as well. Again, this is their second game of the day with a three-hour drive in between. That disc landed out of bounds. Hildebrand with the disc. Vertical stack. Marked by Huey. Seemed like they had a Jenny double Perry. cut out of the back of that stack, too. Jenny Perry putting on an aggressive mark. That's Zhang with the disc. Pushes it up to Ballinger. Oh, nice switch with Huey and Jenny. Back over to Hildebrand. <gasps> oh, great grab. Whoops, I think that was Huey just lost her footing. There's a call. And green pick. Okay. Janine, there are some people on the field we haven't seen yet for the Monarchs. I think the Monarchs are taking an opportunity to rest some key players at this point. That but the group sense. that's out there is doing some really good offensive work right now. Mm hmm Jenny shuts down that strike throw. Woo! Nice grab by 18. There's a timeout call. I think it must be by the Monarchs coach. Yep. Going back over to where that the previous throw went off. That timeout was called for that throw. I think we're going to see some player substitutions after this timeout. I think so. I think on the Monarch side, the Pride side, or both? Yeah, I'm wondering. Like I said, I felt felt like there were some players who we hadn't really seen much of so far in the game in there, perhaps to give some key players some rest. I'm wondering if they're going to put those key players back on the field. Oh, there they are. Yep. Dean and Brown back out. Pride had some substitutions. Same players still out. Yeah. 
the unique feature for the PUL that the coaches can call those timeout from the sidelines, unlike what we see with the USA Ultimate rules. Coaches can control then when that action happens, when they decide to make those timeout calls to make those substitutions. The pick called um, defense. Jenny Perry feels like she couldn't get her mark on or was picked by, sorry, picked by the mark. I think that's an underutilized pick call, that when you have to run through the, the thrower and the marker to keep up with the person you're defending, that that is a legitimate pick call to make, and I think that one gets missed a lot. Nice input by 18. Dump pass. Duffner. Queen past the brown. Oh, to get a mark on she that. Shoots that really deep. Woo! And they pull it down. Barely so. in the back of the end zone, but that's a score for the Monarchs. That ties the game at 13s, and there is 6:55 left in this game. It was a really beautiful shot by Brown. This is a really important game for both teams as i said earlier both teams have yet to see their first win of the season the point differential for the two losses that the pride has had is only been a total of six points they played the radiance and lost by four and they played the nightshade and lost by two so their games have been close all season long See if their O-line can look as clean as they did last time. That same flow. And I think we're going to see just how tired this Monarch team might be getting at this point. I hope Pride uses that to their advantage. They really need to be running them into the ground here. Nice pull by JJ. That's good to see her back out there after being at the trainer's table. Mm -hmm. Rachel Mass with the disc. <gasps> oh. Pat McGuire with almost the save, but couldn't keep that disc in her hand. See if the O-line can get this back. Monarchs are taking over just about midfield. Oh! A high throw, but... Oh, JJ cleans it up. JJ does clean it up. Two defenders back there, but still... <gasps> I think we're going to get a call there. I feel like one defender got the disc pretty cleanly, but I think the other defender might have made contact with the receiver. I think Mary got up there and got the D maybe first, and then there was a lot of contact, but see what happened. Based on the hand signals, I might have seen foul no contest, which means the receiver would be receiver will take it to the front of the end zone. So that's a live disc now. Everybody can move as she walks it up to the front of the end zone. Ah, taps it in All and right. scores. So they that come back with a D break. It was an easy score for them. Five and a half minutes to go in the game. Monarchs retook the lead. 14-13 after the Pride went on a little run. It might be coming down to the last part of this game being mini runs by both teams. Mm out to see who's out there on the D-line for the Monarchs. JJ's out there. Negro's out there. Can't see a bunch of the numbers right now. Phillips picks up that disc for the Pride. Get over to Pruitt. <gasps> Gets it to Mass. Defense came flying through that. 
Ooh, nice spacing. Root to Raul. There's that spacing you were asking yeah. about earlier, right? Oh, a misread. Maggie thought she was still cutting in, and she just planted and went out. It's another break opportunity for the Monarch. Would be a hard one for the pride if they stop now. Hammer shot. Nobody. There it is. There's the turn they needed. We're gonna have to go 80 to get the hold on this one. It's four and a half minutes left to go in this game. And just so our viewers know, at the end of a fourth quarter, it's basically considered a buzzer beater. It has to be out of the thrower's hand and caught in an end zone for that point to count. You don't get the the full possession. The buzzer goes off. Oh. Plenty of time yet. Mast with the disc now. Centers it to Raul. Pride's having... Oh, it's going Ooh, up! It sends it deep to Out of bounds. That disc trails out of bounds. So there's 3.55 left on the clock. Monarchs are picking up the disc. They're in a vertical stack here. There's a nice handler cut by the Monarch. Turn pass. Ooh, wide open, open side player there. He was looking deep. Oh! He wasn't in the end zone. But That's took care of huge. it there. That's a tough one for the Pride to ha handle right now. Yeah. I think that's the second or third time that I've seen the disc thrown over the top with defenders who are on the underside of a deep cutter. Mm -hmm. With the Monarchs being the deep cutting team. Like JJ tipped that to herself and then just had an easy end zone score there. All right, we're at 319 on the clock. This has been a tough fought game for two teams who are looking for their first, first victories of the season. I think there's no loss for desire from either of these teams right now. J fell down on that pole a little bit. Been very impressed by the Monarchs and how they're able to fight through that fatigue. Okay, there's some nice space. It's Phillips with the disc now for the pride. Go Plutsky. And oh. Pruka read that. I'm telling you, I feel like that defense is set up to see that inside throw like that. And if a defender has their eyes on it, they're going to streak and and go for it, and that's exactly what Pruka did there. Montenegro with the disc. Hammer shot, Hammer Pruka. to Pruka. Nice backhand center shot. Okay, Pride. E. Ruka shoots to the end zone to JJ, wide open. With the big kick spike from JJ. Monarchs are really taking off here all of a sudden. You know, after the Pride went on that mini run, the Monarchs, I think, Took a little break, right? Like they had that point where they had some players who hadn't been in a, mon a bunch and took an opportunity to rest some key players, and that gave them the energy to, to rise up through these next several points. I feel like Pride was really fired up there for a bit, but they looks like the wind kind of came out of their sails here. Momentum shifts. Two minutes left. 
seeing some of those newer players out on the Monarchs line. Bull is up. Druitt's going to pick up that disc. Cunningham is still out there for the pride. Turner's out there. Raul's out there. Mast is out there. McGuire is receiving this disc. Plutsky's out there for an O point. He's almost oh, solidly with the deep a deep shot. Woo! Awesome Mast with the grab. layout grab. Yeah, Pletsky out there on an O-line. She's usually a D-line player almost entirely, so yeah. some adjustments by the Pride here to try and get some of that momentum back. 1.45 on the clock. Monarchs have a two-point lead. Pride's going to have to work really quick here to try and get a defensive stop and a score. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, the Monarchs are paying attention to that clock. They'll realize that if they can just complete as many passes as possible right now, they can probably run this clock out. What kind of defense do you think they need to run here to get this turn, D? Well, I'm not going to lie. When they came out that one point and threw a little zone at him, it seemed to disrupt a little bit. It's true when they threw the cup. But at the same time, we've seen some really good D energy from the Pride as well that can be disruptive in and of itself. So it looks like they are coming down in person, D. They're making the resets Ooh, nice. really hard, which is really what you want to do when you know the other team. All they have to do is complete some passes to run off the clock. We're at a minute and a half to go. They need to shut down even those short passes. I think they need to they shut really everything down right now. Need to really clamp. Every stall count reset right now is 10 seconds off the game clock. A nice switch by Jenny Perry. Oh, bro, and that oh. was a tough read. All right. Looks like Duffy's taken a, an, an injury. injury. Didn't really happen. Not sure what happened there either. Pride's also going to take sub. Pride, one minute exactly on the clock right now. Some confusion on the tap-in. Oh, nice pickup by Pletsky. Went deep. Beautiful. And there's your score. We just heard over the radio that I think some more time might get added to the clock. Well, that would be pretty huge for Pride. It was, five seconds. So the uh, observer was trying to get that in before the play started, but wasn't able to get that information in. But the clock has been updated, adding five seconds to the clock. So we're at 57.1 seconds left in the game. The one-point game, the team that is down, the Pride, need to get a defensive hold quickly here. Because they not only need to get the defensive stop, but they have to get it into the end zone before these 57.1 seconds run out. Looks like they put M. Evans out there. I would have put her out there, too, see if she can get down there as quick as she did last time. They're going to have to get this deep really fast. There's the pull by Kat McGuire. And there's Evans beating everybody down to that disc. Brown with the around throw mm -hmm. to Duffy, who has come back in after taking that injury sub earlier. 48 seconds left. Crowd is really going nuts now for this last 40 seconds. They need to get a D right here on these handlers. Every throw, 10 seconds off the clock, potentially. Up, up, up. 
Yes. The D. Okay. Twenty eight seconds. Left. Seconds. Mary's bringing it in. Oh, there's a there's a call. Was there a timeout called? Do not know. Looks like a call by the monarchs of some sort. Oh, in and out of bounds, maybe. Oh no, monarchs may have foul. Twenty-three seconds left. Fifteen six. Monarchs are winning, but Pride's gonna come in with a disc here. There's still discussion going on down there, but we're not quite sure what the discussion is about. No, I think there was a foul. Monarchs may have. We are still trying to figure out what is happening here. Oh. There is a timeout. Did the Monarchs call a timeout while they still had possession? I'm not sure. I'm not going to lie. I'm not sure who has possession of the disc now when Me they come either. back out. <laughs> I would think Pride does, but... Looks like... What? I'm not sure. They're going to add some more time on the clock. 28 seconds, I think, is what I heard over the radio. It was, a, it was a pride timeout, is what we're hearing from the field. 28 seconds on the clock. Pride is going to have possession of the disc. And just for the record, I've pulled out the overtime rules. Should this score make it in such that we end up in overtime? Okay, Graham's pushing through. They have a reset open, but Brown really does a good job on that mark. Brown's okay, now somebody needs to streak into the end zone. Yep, here we go, Graham. 15 no mark. seconds. No mark. Rachel Mass with the disc. 10 seconds. Champ with Pruitt. the disc. Graham with the disc. Put it out on that swing side. Five seconds. Three, Shoot it. Two, one, throw it. Oh. That is the game. They had every opportunity, could not get a quick, clean look at the end zone, and unfortunately were not able to get that disc to an open receiver in the end zone to tie this game and send it into overtime. Another heartbreak end for the Pride, who have had extremely close games but have not been able to pull out a victory yet. Yeah, that, that one's going to sting for sure. I liked how calm they were with the disc. Um, but then they just couldn't quite pull it off in the end. So we need to do our Discraft player of the game. And tonight's Discraft player of the game goes to Cassie Brown from the Milwaukee Monarchs. I don't know the extent of her stats for the game, but I know she was involved in many of the scores, at least three scores. But I'll just say, um, Janine, that I think we saw her be an important disc mover for the Monarchs, for the quick movement, for the times when the uh, Pride defense was coming down fast and hard with their energy. I think Cassie Brown was responsible for helping get the Monarchs moving on their offense. Definitely, that's, you know, the, I think every time I looked, they were centering the Brown off the pole. I think they rely on her to command how the pole play is gonna go. It was an amazing game tonight. I hope the fans enjoyed it. Again, we were coming from Fortress Obets, a beautiful s facility on the southern side of Columbus, Ohio. I hope you enjoyed the game. This is Deanna Ball and Janine Walker signing off.